I should I call it the first? <laughs> should I say to the first um reading and discussion of the 48th chapter of the Desire of Ages titled Who is the Greatest? I hope you've all been blessed by the per session that just went by. All right, so we are going to now pray before we go into our study. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again, Lord, for another day. We thank you, Lord, for this privilege, Lord, to come together, Lord, with like-minded individuals, Father God, to open your words and to delve into it, Father God. You have invited us to learn of you. And Lord, that is what we want to do this morning. That is what we want to do when we open your words. And so, Father God, I ask that you will lead and guide through the medium of your Holy Spirit. Lord, as I bow before you this morning and all of us, I pray that you will cleanse our hearts, Lord Jesus, of impurities, that you will remove from within us, Lord, everything that is unlike you. Cleanse us, Father. Let there be nothing in between us and you. Nothing, Lord, that might hinder our prayers. Forgive us of all our shortcomings, of our iniquities. And Father God, we depend on you this morning to, through the medium of your Holy Spirit, Lord, to keep away all distractions, all spirit of distractions or confusion. Grant us wisdom, open our minds, Lord, so that we will grasp the meanings of your words, Father God, so that we can become like you. I pray for every heir present here this morning that you will that you will open them, Lord Jesus, so that we can hear you speaking to us. I pray that you will speak through me, Lord. I pray that you will anoint my lips, my tongue, so that the words I speak, O oh Lord, will not be mine, but that I will be inspired through your Holy Spirit to speak according to your word and not according to my words. Thank you again for hearing and for answering this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, to begin proper, let us, um, I didn't even choose a song, but I just want to choose uh, this one. I think it's called All Things Bright and Beautiful. We have been enjoying some beautiful sunny mornings, some really summery days this week. And yeah. I just want to give thanks and praise to God for these blessings. Um, all things bright and beautiful. That's him. 93. It has four verses. I will sing verse one. No, no, sorry. <laughs> I will ask the Tuckley twins, please, if they could start off with verse one. I will do verse two. Can I have someone to do verse... Three and another person, verse four, please. So Tuckles, can you please do verse one and I'll take verse two. And can we have two volunteers for verses three and four? Thank you. Hymn number? 93, all things bright and beautiful. Does anyone else know okay. it? I'll, I'll do the, did you say the third verse and the last one? I'll yes, the, someone please could do, yes, third and then fourth. Okay, I'll do the third one. All right, thank you, sis. Who will take verse four, please? I'll try the last one. <laughs> okay, well, you know, this song has two verses. I remember one of them that we 
we used to sing in school, you know, and then I learned the other um, tune when I started coming to Seventh-day Adventist Church. So it doesn't matter which tune you, you decide to take. It's up to you completely. All right, um, Tuckleys, could you please start us off? Thank you. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings, he made them glow in colours, he made them tiny wings. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. The purple-headed mountain, the river running by, the sunset in the morning that brighten up the sky. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. The cold, the cold wind in the winter, the pleasant summer sun, the ripe fruits in the garden, he made them every one. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. He gave us eyes to see them, and lips that we might tell. How great is God Almighty, who has made all things well. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Thank you so much for your lovely singing. And Sister Sylvia, she used the tune that I'm more familiar with. So thank you all. And we're going to be starting now. So I'll just um, ask the Lord's guidance again. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of your words. And we thank you that you invited us to learn of you. Father, as we open your words to learn of you now, may you lead and direct us and draw us closer to you through your words. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, Elder Desire, do you have anything to say before we start, please? Good morning, Sister Ruby. Good morning, girlfriend. I just wanted to quickly just say uh, uh, it's been a blessing going through the Desire of Ages. Uh, I'm sure we've all been blessed with these uh, wonderful studies. Just to remind uh, each and every one of us that our time for this study is only one hour, but I'm sure you can see by the time we start, uh, we'll probably left with 45 minutes. So because we have a short time, um, I just wanted to uh, just say to each and every one of us, let us be mindful of uh, uh, the time limitations. 
when we make comments. Uh, so if we can be as precise and pointed as we can be, uh, let us be considerate also that others may want to make some, some comments. Uh, and let us try to be as relevant to the, to the study as possible so we don't uh, lose the train of thought and uh, the, the subject matter that uh, uh, we have on the table on the day. Uh, it is my prayer that um, we will glean as much lessons as possible every time we come to this study. And uh, yeah, if, uh, I mean, we're not counseling other unrelated subjects. If the Lord brings a subject that needs to be dealt with, I think uh, it, it's good to always uh, come back to the study as, as quickly as possible as the Lord leads. So um, uh, I, I pray that uh, it will be a blessing as we continue to study these half ages. Amen. I'll end back to you, Sister, Sister Ruby. Amen. Thank you for that, um, those reminders, Elder. Okay. Thank you, Antoclis, for projecting the reading on this screen. And we're going to start. You know, yesterday we didn't get to, to say much because of time. We didn't get to say. So can, can we just start from scratch again? <laughs> And um, read the first two chapters, I, sorry, paragraphs. So can I have a reader for the first two paragraphs, please? Thank you. And because we didn't get to go in there, so we don't, we don't, we don't have any recap or any review to do. So we're just going to jump right in the reading. Okay. Can, can someone kindly read chap paragraphs one and two? Thank you. On returning to Capernaum, Jesus did not repair to the well-known resorts where he had taught the people, but with his disciples quietly sought the house that was to be his temporary home. During the remainder of his stay in Galilee, it was his object to instruct the disciples rather than to labor for the multitudes. On the journey through Galilee, Christ had begun, sorry, try, Christ had again tried to prepare the minds of his disciples for the sins before him. He told them that he was to go up to Jerusalem to be put to death and to rise again. And he added the strange and solemn announcements that he was to be betrayed into the hands of his enemies. The disciples did not even now comprehend his words. Although the shadow of a great sorrow fell upon them, a spirit of rivalry found a place in their hearts. They disputed among themselves which should be accounted greatest in the kingdom. This strife they thought to conceal from Jesus, and they did not, as usual, press close to his side, but loitered behind so that he was in advance of them as they entered Capernaum. Jesus read their thoughts, and he longed to counsel and instruct them. But for this, he awaited a quiet hour when their hearts should be open to receive his words. Thank you very much, um, Sister Judith, for reading. Um those two paragraphs. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay, so we see here that Jesus, um, he 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 came and you know they came to Galilee, and it says that during his stay, it was his object to instruct the disciples rather than to labor for the multitudes. You know. In laboring for the multitudes was, you know, Jesus, one of Jesus' main thing to do, you know. But here he realized that his disciples, they needed a bit of reining in. Jesus um, realized that they, it's like they were otherwise minded. They did not understand the gravity of what was looming high of the serious events that were afoot. 
And so he decided that, you know, he knew, he knew he didn't have much time left with them. So he decided that he really need to sit them down and really talk to them and refocus them. Now it says that the disciples, so after Jesus made his announcement, he tried to rein them in, to refocus them. And, but still it says here that the disciples did not even comprehend his words. Why did they not comprehend his words? Because they were, their minds were preoccupied with other things, with, with other worldly things. They were otherwise minded with the things of this world. They were there rivaling between each other, you know, and debating about who should hold the highest position in the kingdom of God, you know. Um, you know, I'm just wondering for us Seventh-day Adventists, you know, sometimes we too get distracted and become um, mindful of the things of this world instead of focusing on the coming of the Lord and, you know, how, how serious it is and how near his coming is. And yeah, so I, I am wondering if, if we too get caught up in this same thing that the disciples were caught up in not realizing how serious these times are. Um, and so it's over to you now. And yeah, can you, what do you think of these two paragraphs? What have you picked out of it, out of them, please? So yeah, I have the Tuckley twins straight ahead. Thank you, Tuckley. Can you please make your point? Uh, good morning. Yes, um, they love to be on. They knew the, they knew the, what they were going to talk about. You know, who was the greatest? You know, there, there was there was rivalry amongst them, strife, and so they loitered to be on because they knew Jesus wouldn't approve of the conversation. So they thought that if they loitered to be on, he wouldn't hear. But they forgot that he could read the minds. Didn't he? Can read the minds of everyone, and so they they hadn't thought about that one. So it was, it was self coming to the surface. It again. was, yeah. When yes. self comes to the surface, sin abounds. Mm. So you know, it, uh, so they're just having this little, little, this little conference to see, you know, what who was the greatest, who who was who was the leader of them, you know. Yes. And uh, as the chapter before, there was there wasn't that there was um there was probably still upset about that as well because uh, only three of them was invited to go up the mountain with Jesus, and the others were down the bottom. Uh, they were jealous because they hadn't been invited, and um, and so this this was coming about as well. And then you know it was all um, there was discontent at the minute that uh, they needed to mature in in, the, in uh, following Christ. They needed to have maturity. And it was also probably bragging about the good deeds. Well, I did this and I did that, mm. and that you know you, you shouldn't brag about your good deeds. Uh, yes, uh, that's that's um they were they were discontented and. Um, they thought, why should he choose some and not others? And uh, he'd chosen, they'd chosen these before, hadn't they, you know? They was, they was the inner circle, Peter, James and John. It was in the, there was the nucleus and then, and then the others. Um, they, they all had work to do and they all did the great work. Apart from Judas. <laughs> yes, they didn't really you. understand Christ's mission until he died and rose again. No, they didn't. And then they still had to have a few tweaks, didn't they? I mean, Peter, he wasn't... He, he wasn't sitting with, <laughs> with the Gentiles. Yeah, when Jews came, you know, they still they still needed it. They still needed the, uh, had to have, you know, uh, have a few um, tweaks to make them right, so they were doing the right thing. We all live and learn, and, and that to live and learn. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for that important um, contribution there. Yes, and that reminds me of um, church leadership sometimes you know you have rivalry over church position oh who should be the first elder and oh the oh this person can't be the elder because he doesn't have a master's degree or you know he's not as educated as that one and you know you know and and we do have these things amongst us in our churches so it's not just the disciples so we need to look within ourselves as well and not just look 
at the disciples because the very thing that was happening amongst them, it happened. It, you know, these things are happening in our churches today, you know, and uh, just as the disciples misunderstood Christ's mission and the nature of his kingdom, the same thing is happening amongst us today. Okay, thank you. So do we have any other contribution, please, from these two paragraphs? And, you know, and we can't fool ourselves as well because... You know, whilst we might be having secret thoughts about worldly things and men might not hear, might not know what we're thinking about, but Jesus discerns every thought of our hearts. So we can't hide from Jesus. So we might as well confess to him, you know. Oh, Sister Sylvia and then the Tuckleys again. Thank you. Go ahead, please, in that order. Okay, thank you. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. as, as we, we read this paragraph, we're talking of strife. As the strife was amongst them, they felt there was need to conceal it from Christ. Um, I was, I was just thinking back at um, some of the conversations sometimes we have uh, among us ourselves, um, I'll, I'll, I'll refer to our church as an example, especially when we're having Bible studies, um, that a strife that comes comes up in the discussions um, following on on maybe what we might be studying. And, and many a times um, you, you come to realize that um, Instead of it being a study, it, it then now becomes um, um, an issue of um, who knows best, if you like, or um, you, you, you don't know anything or whatever, whoever might be leading out. Um, the spirit of, of, of wanting to to learn is not there, it, it is removed. However, what you then now get is, it, it becomes kind of an argument of um, your, yours is not right, my one is right, that, that kind of spirit, which is so wrong. And and yet, like, like, like we see here for, for the disciples, rather than the minds being on what Christ had just told them, I am going up to Jerusalem to be killed. Instead of that being on their minds, what does this mean? Or, or what are we going to do without our savior? Or Christ, what shall we do? Instead of that being the focus, it, it was there now, now the focus was who, who's going to be, who is greater, who should be next to him. And so it's it's the same thing I see um, among us sometimes. Rather than the focus be, uh, what shall I do to to understand the scripture? Whatever the brother or sister may have brought out, or oh, I may not have seen it like that. Or instead of the spirit being, what where did you get that from? I haven't seen it at all, or I haven't read that before. Or tell me where you read it so that I. I go back to read and understand. It is a different spirit that cuts in and, and kills the spirit of, of the edifying of the, of the body and, and the teachable spirit and for us to, to grow together. And so I think you see that in here as well. It's, it was away from the focus of what was just about to come before them. And for us, it is, what shall I do to, to make myself ready for for, for for the coming of Christ, because we are, you're here, to, we are all here to learn to edify one another. How does that imp, uh, uh, impart on my life, Christian journey? What shall I do to 
to understand these words. It's a different spirit. And I think we do see that. And I, pr I pray that, yeah, this is a lesson as well, actually, for me. Thank you. And for us as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Sylvia. And I, I do recognize this as well, um, this kind of spirit where you have people who they they have Bible discussion or they actually study the, the, the Bible in order to have debates and to, to get recognition. So it's it's sometimes it, the discussion becomes a battle for supremacy, you know, to get recognition, you know, for people to say, oh, wow, this guy, he's versing the scripture. Wow. We probably should make him um, the <laughs> leader of the Bible studies or or make him a first elder or so. <laughs> so it becomes a battle for supremacy instead of, like you said, you know, learning of Christ to make ourselves better Christians and better servants of God. So um, let, let's be careful lest we also be tempted. Thank you very much. Um, sis, um, Topley Twins, can you make your point, please? And then uh, Sister Kesey and then Brother JB. Thanks. Uh, yes, just a short comment. Um, you know, Jesus knew what was going off and um, he had to wait. He had to wait a quiet hour when the heart should be open to receive his words. So he had to wait for the right time because sometimes if there's a situation, there's a right time to deal with it and you need knowledge, you need wisdom. God, you know, Jesus had wisdom. He knew the right time to deal with it so he could instruct them and that they'd be open to listen. Because if it's if it's a heated debate, it's not it's not the right time to um, uh, deal with it. You know, you have to wait until things are quieted down and then you deal with it. So Jesus knew when the, the right time was. He says he awaited a quiet hour when their heart should be open to receive his words. Amen. That's that's very that's a very very important point. Thank you so much. Thank you for pointing that out, um, Sister Casia. Yes, thank you, uh, Sister Ruby, and good good morning, everybody on the platform. Yes, I'm just looking at the disciples, um, and I'm just thinking, and uh, nothing much has changed when we look at ourselves. Um, Christ was going to fulfill that very, very important uh, service of the sanctuary on earth, uh, his death on the cross. Because of the lack of understanding of, of the ministry of Christ, without the cross, there would not be salvation. You know, their salvation hung on this very important event which was going to take place. Instead of praying with the Savior, they were thinking about themselves, who is going to be the greatest. They were thinking about this earthly life, temporary, which is so small in comparison to the significance of eternal life, you know, which is forever. And they were concentrating on this small piece of, um, of life, this small, if we were to take a string, you'd say maybe, um, if you take a ball of, uh, you know, a string where there's, you know, yards and yards of string, you know, meters and meters of string, you're only concentrating probably on one quarter of that. They had lost the complete picture of who the Messiah was, what was he going to do, what is the plan of salvation. And we have the privilege of seeing the bigger picture as we are studying now. But still, are we not being like the disciples that we are so worried about the day-to-day -day, uh, bread on the table? I'm not saying we should not be working, but the importance which we place on the day-to-day -day is opposed to the importance of, of even training our children for eternity or even uh, doing the work of God for eternity. Uh, and I'm saying, and now we know that Christ is just about to come. I mean, everything else. Maybe these ones are in a, in a you know a, a a better position than us. 
where, where we know that everything is going to be consumed. The ends of the world are upon us. Shouldn't we be focusing now on, on the gospel than what we are doing? Shouldn't we be doing things differently, completely differently? Because the ends of the worlds are just upon us. Maybe we need to pray to say, God, what can I do now in this in these last hours of this earth history? What do you need me to do? Should that be our prayer every day, every moment? Lord, who is there? Send me. Who, who next should I speak to? Because this world is coming to an end. No matter how much we want to, to make sure that our children will attain that and that, that's going to be all useless. The only thing we are going to carry to, to heaven is our characters. And that should be the main focus. That is the gospel. That is why Christ came. So I think we need to be praying for the right priorities, especially in the times which we are living in. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for that reminder. We have got really serious events ahead and those are looming high we, we we can see them you know and yeah these are serious times that we're living in and we ought to be doing uh, uh reflecting we ought to be soul ser searching we ought to be afflicting our souls before god because we are actually living in the anti-typical day of atonement we cannot afford to allow sin to be in our camps you know because the 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 the, the coming of the lord is going to be um is going to be taking us um it's going to be a surprise for all of us whether we're ready or not it's it, it's just going to be taking we're not going to we know that his coming is near but we don't know the hour we do not know the hour so it's going to be a surprise when the hour comes and so we should be praying and asking the Lord to help us to be in constant state of readiness. And also we should be working to win souls for his kingdom because he is coming and he will be pronouncing well done, good and faithful servants. And how can we expect to be called servants if we're not working for our master? You know, I've really been thinking about that recently, that we ought to be working for our master so that we can hear, well done, good and faithful servant. We should ask the Lord to place a burden on our hearts for souls, you know, and yeah, it's really serious. So many people are dying and there is something for everyone to do. You know, I, I, I whether you're shy or not, there is something for each of us to do. There's a work for each of us to do, to bring the word of God to a dying world. You know, there's no one way of reaching souls. There are so many ways, uh, creative ways. And um, yeah, so we we will not have any excuse. Um, thank you, Sister uh, Kesia, for these words. All right, um, let's move on to Brother JV and then Sister Hope. Uh, good thank morning, you. Hope. I think the, the scripture does say that there's nothing new under the sun. So the, the, the same disease the disciples had, the same disease still uh, is, I mean, is still with us uh, because they failed to focus on uh, what was at hand. So they had what Christ, uh, I mean, that's why he said they had what Christ said to them, but because due to unbelief i mean they have this rivalry the spirit of rivalry even if they they were uh walking with christ so we have to juice out lessons from what is written there because it, it's this spirit of rivalry is still i mean it's still there which means um their hearts are not right so we have to render the heart I mean, to Christ, for Christ to change us, really. Unless their heart is changed from within, uh, 
No change will happen in a human being. We'll continue hearing these precious truths, but these precious truths will not do any anything. There will be no change, but the heart must be surrendered to Christ. We sing all these songs, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Spirit of, of, the, of the Living God, uh, mold us and whatever. We need to be serious when we sing, sing those songs and mean it. Otherwise, it's pointless because the heart must be surrendered. And in this case, we see that the disciples, they lost focus at all. They were focusing on who should be the greatest in the kingdom. They were only thinking about the earthly kingdom. When Christ never came to establish any earthly kingdom. Thank you. So we have to see what lessons are we picking from the reading. Then we apply the lessons and we use Christ as the mirror for each and every one of us. Thank you. Thank you for those um, reminders, Brother JB, that we should be, our hearts should be fully surrendered to Christ and that we should daily, you know, uh, submit completely to the workings of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's, that's only how we're going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Thank you. Um, Sister Hope, and then Sister Charlene, and then the top list again. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Sister, and uh, good morning, all. Uh, just to bear in mind that these wonderful people were young at heart. Uh, you know, they, they were still babes. They were still babes. It's, they uh, had been in an, an influence around them where their hearts were not submissive. They, 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 they were always surrounded by these things of this world. As our brother was saying, the kingdom of, of, of the earth. They were young. You know, it's so much like us when we were, where, where we are now is not where we were before. And I believe and I trust as we are reading this to see how God Christ is so wonderful and so patient, so patient with these wonderful people because he needed to, to remind them constantly to instruct them constantly. Because remember, they had been in bondage for years. Christ was not told as much as they saw the wonderful uh, miracles, but still it takes time. It takes time. We, we can also envisage also in our children, right? When we instruct them, instruct them, train them when they're young, and they grow older and older and older. Even when they're still old and we're still parents, we're still instructing them. Because that's the spirit of patience. Now, uh, bringing that in mind, his, yes, Christ was preparing their minds, preparing their minds to remind, to bring their focus back onto him. And that is the spirit that we should have. Because nobody is taught these things. And sometimes as we are taught, uh, I'm being taught by the Holy Spirit, as we are learning constantly, sometimes also our ways can be, uh, 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 we can veer off the course. But the most important thing is indeed to watch and pray that Christ brings our minds back He's preparing us for the second coming of Christ. He's preparing us for the crisis before us. But sometimes there are disruptions. But we just thank God that when we see these things also in the church, there are some babes in the church. You know, you can be old and still be a babe. Age is nothing. Is the spirit, as we sing, the heart, the mind that we have to be praying for God to help us. And remember, also, we learn. We have, he, he was teaching them, to, he, he was teaching them, right? He was instructing them, instructing is teaching. 
so that he may also, when he leaves, he, he, uh, they might be also instructed to go and, and preach the gospel. And we have also to have lessons of teaching in the church. Many of us, we go into these ministries. We need time for, to learn to be able to come together, to learn to be a deaconess, how we need to behave, how we need to ins be instructed, how to uh, uh, deal with people who come to us. I'm, I'm giving an example. Those ministries, we cannot just come into a ministry. We have to be prayerful. We have to find ways that we can also teach and also learn. We are all teachers and we are also students, always. So uh, I, I thank God for this and what Christ is doing uh, because he's instructing. And also we are being instructed and learning for the example of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you for those words. Yes, we are ever learning and we are also teaching. As we learn, we're teaching. And I thank God for his patience towards us. You know, just like the disciples, we often get distracted and Christ has to be constantly rain, be constantly reining us in all the time to refocus our minds, our attention on the things, the important things, you know. And so the spirit of distraction and disruption is ever there because that's one of the enemy's tools to distract us, you know. <laughs> He's sophisticated in, in, in getting us out of the, the kingdom of God. He's not going to use um, frightening things. He's going to come subtly. And distraction is one of his most dare tools. Is it the tool, one of the tools that is dearest to him. And it works. It works so well, you know. And so we have to be mindful of um, the various means of distraction that the enemy is always using. Uh, may the Lord help us to focus on the things that are important in these last days. Thank you, Sister Hope. Um, Sister Tuckers, can you please go ahead and then Elder Desire. Thank you. I think Sister Charlene was before us. Yes, Sister Charlene, I'm so sorry. I made a mistake. Please, please go ahead, my dear. So sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Thank you. Good yes. morning, everybody. Um, yes, I was just thinking there's so many beautiful things in this thing what we've just read. There's that incredible mercy that God gives us. And I also want to talk about the patience, Sister Hope has also said, the mercy. You know, the other day I was having a hard time and sometimes, you know, the devil just oh, throws so much, so much stuff at you. And you think, oh, what now? You know, and then the God look in your mind, not physically, in your mind shows you that this this look of love and mercy he gives to you. Like, man, I think I'm so undeserving. And I and I had that 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 I felt that mercy, like the disciples had so much mercy from God. And then it just melts my heart. And I'm thinking, wow, I should have that mercy that God has towards me, towards others, especially people who are not of the faith. They don't know these things, you know, that are striving and that are competing with each other at the workplace or wherever, you know, and they don't know. So we must have extreme mercy on that, on others. And another thing I've learned is from this piece is the, 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 the strength that God gave his disciples. Look at the turnaround. I mean, they were not fit to, to work for him before, but, you know, he trained them to be these amazing soldiers. And afterwards, they were an amazing team. There was no strife between them. Just the things that God can do with our lives, if we give it all to him and we say, Lord, I need help, we can do amazing things. Look at the disciples, you know, this is this, this total turnaround. And that gives me hope again that, you know, that I can get there and that I can um, overcome whatever I need to still overcome because the time is so short. We need to really get rid of those sins, whatever it is, as you were talking about, this to be the distractions from whatever it might be a good thing, but it's a distraction, your phone, all these things, and that there's still power, that there's power in, in God's and strength with God that I can overcome. And these Bible stories are just so inspiring. So, yeah, I really feel inspired this morning. Thank you. 
Thank you, Sister Charlene, for that. You know, yes, um, there is hope for us, you know, no matter what is going on now. And even for our children, we see them, you know, so... Uh, and, and may the Lord help us to be merciful just like himself, just like he was with his disciples, and to pray without ceasing for our children and for others. No matter what we see, if we persist in prayer, Christ will turn them around, will turn their hearts. So thank you. Um, Elder Desire, please make your point. Amen. Thank you, Sister Ruby. Good morning, brethren. Uh, yes, I just wanted to add to what everybody has been saying. Um, uh, what uh, stood out for me, what I was just thinking reading those two paragraphs, is that this was uh, uh, the inner circle, uh, you would say, the inner circle of uh, Jesus' ministry. These were the 12. Uh, I mean, in today's world, would you'd say these are the present truth believers. These are the 12 who left everything to follow Jesus. Um, I mean, they had families, but they had left everything to follow Jesus. But yet, they are the ones who don't get it. Uh, as it says there, that they did not comprehend what he was saying. That's one thing. Secondly, they are arguing, disputing on the way as to who shall be the greatest. Present truth believers. Um, and I was just thinking how accurate this represents even our situation today. You know, Satan is cunning. You might leave everything in the world and join present truth and believe in present truth messages. Yes, do all the outward. People say this man has left everything. Man is destined for the kingdom. But could it be possible that Satan will have uh, a snare that you have for present truth, present truth believers? Uh, supremacy, preeminence, this disease of wanting uh, to be better than your fellow believers. Uh, I think uh, Sister Elia was talking about, you know, in Bible studies, uh, what would happen, the spirit of, of wanting to the be to be the best. I'm, a, I'm also thinking in terms of present truth believers now, we have lots of present truth ministries. Are we united? I've often seen a spirit where there's often uh, this competition between present truth believers. Sometimes we are doing the same thing, one ministry uh, uh, striving for the master, wanting to be the greatest. Um, you know, I was thinking how beautiful it would be if present truth ministries would come together in humility and say, let's do one thing. Let's preach the kingdom. But you have, there is another true education, there's another medical something, there's another. And we all want to organize meetings separately because we don't want the destruction of another ministry. Or even these um, YouTube ministries, sometimes you actually hear them talking about bad or how the other ministry is doing. But yet, they are present truth believers. And so we might look at the disciples and say, how, how, how could they be so evil? How could they not get it? But this is sadly the situation we have even today, striving for the mastery, wanting to be the greatest. I think uh, the Lord has one counsel to give us, you know, in Matthew 11, he says, the 28, 29, he says, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly. Philippians 2, I think it's verse 3 or 2, somewhere there. Uh, again, the whole chapter is powerful, you know, speaking of the mind of Christ. 
but it says, esteem others better than yourself. This is the spirit of Christ. Even in ministry, may God help us. Uh, and I think just like the disciples, we might appear on the outward that we we have taken some great strides. But if we do not have the spirit of Christ, we shall likewise perish. Wow, thank you for those solemn words. If we do not have the spirit of Christ, we will perish. We will not make it into the kingdom. Thank you for those very important words. May we pray for the spirit of Christ to reign in us. Thank you, Elder. Um, Tokli Twins and then... Um, I think we only have, could you please make uh, your points brief, um, Topley Twins and then Brother Tabuda. So we have five minutes left to split between both of you. Thank you. Uh, mine's only a short, short comment. Um, okay. It said uh, uh, that the disciples did not even now comprehend his words. Um, could you imagine how much better it would have been for Jesus if even one of them understood what he was going to go through, that they could empathise with him, sympathise with him, and they could study the scriptures together, you know, and know exactly what, um, you know, what Jesus was going to go through. But we know John was probably the closest disciple, but even he didn't understand at this time. And, you know, it would have been so much better for Jesus if he'd had, if you're going through something, you've got somebody that's, that's, out, that's with you, it's going, not going through it with you, but is able to, uh, uh, Empathize. you know, comfort you. And, um, and they could have discussed the scriptures together, but they, they really lost a great opportunity, all of them. A great opportunity was lost. And also, um, this arguing and striving, uh, be, uh, trying to be better than each other, uh, is separated from Christ. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. You know, at the time when Christ needed them most to understand what he was going to be going through and to, you know, to sympathize with him, that was the time that the devil chose to distract them so that Christ wouldn't even be given the kind of support that he needed as a human being. And that takes my mind back to when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane and he was going through so much mental agony and he, he took some of his disciples with him to comfort him and to bear him up, but they fell asleep. And so Christ had to bear it all alone. No, you know, support at that very, very critical moment. So, oh. Um, may we not be <laughs> um, like that, you know, may the Lord help us. Um, yeah, thank you for those words, Tuffers. Um Then we have um, Elder Tabuda, can you please make your point? And I think this is the last one we might have time for. So please go ahead, thank you. Thank you, Sister Ruby. Good morning to everybody. Mine is gonna be very brief. Um, I just to well, it's kind of um, uh, just to reiterate what has been mentioned before. You just notice that when uh, they were walking with Jesus, the disciples walked back. So this is the time when they were kind of not really in tune with Christ. This is the time they started to discuss those issues, as it is uh, mentioned in the passage that the the disciples were just walking behind and it's as if uh so this is the time uh normally when we are not really connected uh with christ this is the time when the devil comes in and bring plants in all these ideas which is unlike him and uh, i think this is exactly um what uh, uh happened to the uh, to the disciples that at times we as we in our spiritual journey we also need to consider our ways whether are we still in tune or are we still connected? Amen. Amen. Yes. May we consider our ways. May we reflect. May we examine ourselves, you know, moment by moment, you know, to ensure that we are doing what is right. 
and that we're in tune with Christ. Um, I thank you all for your contributions and for making this, this discussion what it was. I believe it was, it was a good one. Thank the Lord and thanks for the leading of the Holy Spirit this morning. And um, may we ponder these words. May we go now and um, do our soul searching because the coming of the Lord is near. Thank you again. Um, and we're just going to close now. Um, so it's now half past six. Yes, so can I just kindly ask someone to, to just give us a closing prayer as we go? Thank you all. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the lessons you've brought out to us this morning. We thank you that you want to teach us. You want us to understand the plans you have for us, how we ought to work with you. We ask that these lessons will remain in us and that, Lord, we practice what you require of us, dear God. I pray that you bless each and every one who is on this platform. I thank you for Sister Ruby, bless the ministry. Continue to guide us, dear God, as we depart from each other. Bring us back once again tomorrow so that we can learn more about your life and follow your example. Thank you, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Judith, for praying. And I will now hand over to, um, to Elder Desire. Thank you. Brother Desire? I'm handing over to you now. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Ruby. Uh, uh, sisters, are you in a position to do the last remarks? I'm about to leave. Thank you. Yes, I'm just, just seeing your text. I thought it was quiet, so I thought I'll quick, quickly have a look to see if there's a text. Yes. Um, yes, thank you, Sister Ruby. It was certainly a blessing this morning, and uh, there was nobody wandered off the path. <laughs> so it was re it was really lovely um yes at um, 12 o'clock it will be midday prayer then at 6 30 sound surface followed by another timely message from and another lady. lady it's sister Anne marie tonight oh um, we're going to have a good sister. message we're going to have a good message that's at, uh, that's that's in this evening and rem and rem remember all the roads lead to kevin lee um, the 23rd 20 to the 29th of December for our winter retreat. Amen. So have a nice day after everyone. A nice hot day. Mm. I think we've been promised th thunderstorms, but um, we'll see. So have a <laughs> nice day, everyone, and see you all later. Bye. Thank you all. Bye.